Good morning, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN. For David Denoyer on TCTV, time now for the Mayor's Report. And on this Saturday morning with us, Mayor Michael Beamish. Good morning. Well, good morning, Clint. Good morning, David. Good morning, all those who are listening. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. Rain, <laughs> rain, go away, come again some other day. Or, or maybe not. Or, or at least not so much. We, we, we have nice green grass that's growing nicely. Oh, we no. have all the trees in full bloom now. A lot but, of mowing going on and uh, lawn manicuring and upkeep happening. Uh, unfortunately, that rain did kind of uh, uh, put the uh, damper. <laughs> damper on last week's, a uh, couple of last week's activities. Well, we, we did. But, you know, uh, the good Lord provides us with uh, challenges, and he also provides us with opportunities. And certainly this is part of the season that we're in, and uh, all we have to do is look at the beauty that surrounds us, and then we can look past all the heavy rain that we received. But the heavy rain did have an impact on a number of our events, and, and that just means we have challenges to reschedule those events. Well, something else that the good Lord gave us, and that was engineers that had the foresight in uh, the planning of, like, how uh, Treasure Island is constructed. Oh, thanks, Clint. And that, that, that really is, uh, wow, I appreciate what you just said. For reasons that we give, sometimes we don't give full credit to what we think in terms of vision for the future. We knew that Treasure Island was a park. It has a great history and legacy about it. And to restore that and re-resurrect that, we knew it was along the Great Miami River. It, it flooded when the Hobarts <laughs> built it in the beginning. Yeah, you know, the engineers, we, we sat down when we looked at to try to uh, revamp the the Treasure Island Park, which I think people would have to say if they just look at last year's events, not even this year's events, but last year's events, how successful that park has become, how successful the Smith Boathouse Restaurant has become. And it was through the engineering efforts of knowing that we're along the river, look, when it rains heavy, as the good Lord has allowed it to happen, <laughs> the water will rise. We knew that. Everybody knows that. And we know we had a flood plain. But we also engineered all the structures of Treasure Island Park so that they wouldn't be impacted electrically and, you know, and have problems, issues, that uh, the water will rise. And we've designed it so the water will recede as soon as the rain stops. And you know what? It did exactly what it was supposed to do. Well, in, in all the flooding, in all the years that have ever transpired at Treasure Island, uh, that water has never gone into the boathouse. And it didn't this Into time. the and marina, it, no. And we had some serious heavy rain. Yes. And uh, if you looked at the river, that fast-paced water did cause us to really reevaluate what we wanted to put on the river for events in this particular time zone doesn't mean we can't reschedule those. And we do have great plans for the Treasure Island Park, as we did last year, and many thousands of people saw the power and the enjoyment of that park and the beauty that it has along the riverfront to the downtown from the boathouse. And uh, uh, we were talking earlier, uh, the boathouse restaurant didn't skip a beat. No. Over the heavy rains of the weekend, uh, we knew it wasn't going to, the water wasn't coming into the boathouse, it never has, and lots of people came out and enjoyed the ambiance of the restaurant, the cuisine, but also the view. The one thing I'll say, and if you go down to the boathouse, um, any, any of the naysayers saying, well, it's just going to be destroyed, it's going to be torn up by the water, well, it hasn't. If you look at the levees, the levees are green, and the levees always are green and look great, and those flood out. So you're not going to get that change down at uh, Treasure Island. But if you look at uh, the engineering, we'll, we'll go with that. Everything is built, first off, with concrete and is very well anchored. It nothing float is, away, did Nothing it? is going to float <laughs> away. But when it comes to everything electrical, it is above the flood line. 
Yes, we designed that to the fact that we knew where the boathouse was, we knew how long standing the boathouse has been, and we knew the renovations that we would have put in would be beneficial to all the uh, regional citizens that wanted to come and enjoy. But we built it all the uh, the amphitheater. We built the shelter house uh, so that if there was a power, uh, the uh, lighthouse. Yes. The lighthouse has the power plant. So everything was designed to protect the electrical so that once the water recedes, which it was designed to do as quick as possible, and it did, uh, I, I'm so pleased with the engineering, the design team, uh, because that, uh, that has become a real asset, natural asset of the community, and it draws people. If you uh, come down there um, and see, uh, you know, parking, in fact, maybe parking is going to become a premium uh, <laughs> down there with the number of people that want to utilize the, that park. So it, it is a different kind of a park. We knew that. It's along the river. We knew that. We knew if it rains heavy, water may come up. But also, I, I can't say enough about our design staff, our engineering team, and making sure, and the contributions that have been made, uh, the donations, like the Troy Foundation put the lighthouse back up. It's just Which, beautiful. Functional. By the way, when I went down and checked it out several times when it was flooded, I thought it looked so neat with the lighthouse. It's going around. Was, was actually out in the water, but it was up on its cement foundation up far above the water. Yeah. Clint, I, I can't thank you enough for bringing that to our attention today because, you know, it is a unique park. We knew that. It's, we have unique parks all through Troy, and again, it, it, it models my vision as we need to have uh, uh, activities, parks for people of all ages so they can participate and, and enjoy. And this is an ambiance type of a quality of life park where people can go sit on a patio, sit in the shelter house, look downstream, and see the beauty. Now, when the water goes up and, the, and it's rushing, you know, we have to be very careful we, to put people on the river. The swift water. You the, can't get into that right. swift water. So we're safety conscious as well and be in reality that the water does move fast and we do not want to have people in the water when the waters are up high. But uh, to say that we uh, have a park, um, it's a, it is a valuable resource to us. It has been proven and we will continue to have activities. We may have to reschedule activities. That's okay too. Well, if it's if we've got a, a big rainstorm anyway, activities will have to be rescheduled because we're not going to have them out in the rain. We did have an activity this past week. You mentioned well, about that. We were going to have a safety awareness program for yep. bicycles and have young people come and be fitted for helmets and labeled and uh, you know. And we'll reschedule that. We were going to have a Van Allen Duke Park. But we're also safety conscious. We don't want to put people in harm's way. Well, and that would be the same as someone saying, well, why did we build a mountain bike track if it's just going to be muddy? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> because a, a dirt track, when it gets rained on, is going to be muddy. But uh, another great event, there, there were going to be uh, four hours of adult relay races. Oh, yeah, it was going to be fun. Out of, out of the park. But it, like you said, it'll be rescheduled. And we've got plenty of time this summer and uh, plenty of time that everybody is going to be able to take advantage. Uh, I know the kids will be taking advantage of the mountain bike park. Th thanks, Glenn. And, and I would only say, let's look at the umbrella effect. You know, what we're trying to do is build a place, <clears throat> a community where people can come in, live, work play, uh, join in on the activities, but we're trying to build a workforce for our future uh, businesses that are here already and will continue to grow. The, the biggest challenge we do have is we have jobs available for people. Lots of it's jobs. Having, yeah, Troy's been blessed, and, and people don't, I, I think sometimes we, we take that for granted. We do have the jobs. We do have openings. But we need to have the folks that come into our community will see the value of our community. And let's face it, quality of life amenities are those draws that gravitate people into our region and into our community. And that's something that I think we always have to keep in the forefront. We want our businesses. We want to keep and retain our businesses. But we also want to have the people that can take those jobs, good jobs, and, and, and still enjoy 
the quality that we provide here in, in this Miami County, the Troy community, and this region. Let's keep our people right here in town. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great way to do it. Uh, and there are plenty of things that are coming up this summer. We've got tons of activities that will be going on down at Treasure Island, uh, at Prouty Plaza. Um, Hainer. Hainer. Center. They've got their Lucky Lemonade concerts, and Hainer's also in with Main Street that do events down on Prouty. And well, we, we, we are very blessed to have tremendous partners uh, from foundations to treasures of Troy uh, to organizations in Troy that all work together to provide entertainment and value to our community and our downtown, our river, our parks, and uh, on. And, and can I put a, one plug in for Certainly. Hainer Cultural Center? You know, Hainer does so many different projects and so many different displays. That they've got the bicycles, and I'll let you pronounce that word again. Las Bicicletas. Oh, I love the way you <laughs> say that. But, uh, you know, the, they have a bicycle display. They have other displays there. This past uh, weekend, we had the Troy Strawberry Festival Golden Couple, and we had a couple from Piqua that were named a 2017 Golden Couple, uh, Carl and Linda uh, uh, Sexhauer uh, from Piqua. Uh, next year, we have the second decade of Golden Couples. These are wow. people married over 50 years of wedded bliss. And in fact, the average last week was 57.4 years of, uh, of wedded bliss of the, the finalists that we had on stage. So it That's was a, a lot of tolerance. Event. But <laughs> I gotta give David Wyan and his staff and Linda Lee Jolly, they have committed to making that a special event. They set it up for us. Um, they make sure everything's just right. Our committee, I have a, a wonderful veteran committee has been together for over 12 years doing this same event. And I'll tell you, it's just wonderful to see the senior couples coming together, enjoying their themselves, and also seeing uh, if they can kind of reminisce a little bit and uh, come away. The Sex Hours, by the way, scored a perfect score. Wow. 85 total points is, is given in that event, and they, uh, they received 85 points. The, the last question, I uh, just... Uh, with the appetite for next year is we ask if if you found a genie in a bottle what would be your first wish and many of them had very thought heartfelt thoughts like world peace uh, health for their spouse you know just really heartwarming things they had sex hours uh, wanting to paint their house and you know who would have thought that would have been a match <laughs> but they both want to paint their house so it was uh, they matched it up and they got the bonus points and that put them over the top so well uh, congratulations to them yep they'll be there next year uh, representing uh, the 2017 winner and uh, then we'll have all the past winners of that decade joining them in competition now, uh, Hobart Arena is going to be having an open house, oh. and this is a chance for folks to come in and uh, see everything that has been done over there. You know, it's big investment, but the investment pays off because we've already had <coughs> big events being booked for that. Ken and Kerry uh, are just doing a wonderful job along it's, with their team. It seems like there are already more events that right. are in there than what we right. saw uh, the, well before any of that started. When you add the Bravo Room, a little history there in uh, Hobart Arena, uh, and you add that as a meet and greet place uh, or for special events, uh, and then uh, we're going to have an open house. And, and we want people, many people have already found their way back into the arena for walking. And that's a wellness activity. But if you want to come, we'll have our staff there to answer questions, talk about a little of the history, also uh, uh, talk about what the future it looks like at the Hobart Arena, but just to walk around and see the changes that have taken place. I think they're going to see that's a positive treasure uh, that many communities only wish they had, and we have it in place. That'll be May 22nd. It's right before those high school graduations <laughs> take place, and it'll be from 6 to 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll just kind of open house, come, see, walk, ask, and uh, there's no formal program. It's just, uh, just to kind of let people see what's taking place um, 
at, at the Hobart Arena, again, May 22nd, about a week before all the graduations. And that's coming down the road, too. We're going to have a lot of happy seniors moving on to uh, their next venture, uh, most of them uh, either in a skilled trade uh, or a, a college uh, class someplace. Around now, the country. Now, with the Bravo Room, I just wanted to uh, throw in there because I know that you and I had talked before, and and it's a room that you're an area that you can rent that you've already uh, officiated a wedding and, and broke in the Bravo Room. I was very honored to uh, break in the Bravo Room for the first wedding that was took, taking place there, and and it was a great facility because you could have the service one one side and then move over to a reception area on the other side so it has great possibilities for a lot of organizations uh, weddings uh, you know I would say just talk to Ken and Carrie and and uh, get it booked in because I have a feeling it's going to be a very popular venue. Now they can also provide the food for the event and, and we're not talking about hot dogs and nachos at the arena this is a, a real chef in the kitchen Dave Kurg yep. and uh, full kitchen at the the disposal for the events. You know, and, and he takes his job seriously. Oh as yes, well. he does. And uh, you know, just another uh, opportunity in our little small midwestern city of Troy, Ohio, with so many different treasures that we are blessed to have. And Hobart Arena, with that expansion and renovation, is just going to just going to attract activity. Absolutely. And uh, you touched on it real quick, but graduation, we've got the, that is fastly approaching. I, I keep a stock of Kleenexes in the studio. Lori has, uh, her youngest is graduating this year. Well, you know, the, you know beyond just Troy High School graduation, other uh, school districts want to come into the arena. Mm -hmm. It's built for this kind of an event. Uh, and boy, uh, you know, it, it, it is one of those happy, sad times because... You know, classmates see each other maybe for the last time. Headed uh, off to college. And heading and off in their own different vocations and ventures. And, and uh, hopefully we'll bring those, some of those uh, graduates back into this area. Uh, and uh, they will uh, live, raise a family, and enjoy the ambiance of this community. All right. Uh, back to the bicycles, uh, the Las Bicicletas. I love the way you say that. Uh, <laughs> if I say it the same every time, <laughs> I'll probably be lucky. But uh, it, bringing people into town to check them out. Well, it, it has been a nice display. It's a unique display. It is. It fits a theme, bicycles, a bike-friendly community. And uh, But I would also uh, like to throw out, if you had an opportunity to go to the Mayflower Art Theater, um, uh, uh, they... Uh, they have a great display of uh, art in their uh, hallway there, and of course uh, uh, they do a super job of promoting arts, and uh, you get a chance to, to look at the art that, that's on display there and have a People's Choice Award. You can pick your favorite. And uh, Lisa does a lot of classes uh, Lisa, and things with the kids, too. You know, this has great possibilities. We've taken a theater and we made it an art center, and they could have uh, uh, programs in the art uh, studio. Uh, they can have the auditorium uh, for Do a lectures. Birth or, or birthday display. party for kids that can come in and they can watch a movie. And right downtown Troy. Yep. So, you know, these are those little treasures that uh, are very valuable to any community, and we're right here in downtown, beautiful downtown Troy, uh, so I would encourage people, if they get a chance, stop into the Mayflower Art Center, see what the display looks like, vote for your favorite art project, uh, piece, and uh, enjoy the uh, sculptures on the outside. Go down to Hainer. We have a small sculpture display there as well. They have a JFK display down there. Yes, they do. Right now. So, you know, it's right here in our own community with so many things to do, recreation as well as culture. All right. Is there anything else that you'd like to add in? No, next week will be when you have council. Next week we do have council. It'll be Monday, at seven o'clock, City Hall. Um, last last time we had no uh, resolutions and uh, and or uh, ordinances. Uh, I'm not sure that'll stay like that for the next <laughs> meeting. So uh, come out, uh, see see our council in action. Uh, again, these are folks that live in our community, are giving back to their community through their service. 
and they um, they're wonderful people. All right, Mayor. We look forward to uh, Strawberry Festival uh, only a few weeks away. Yep. And that is that is tough to believe. We do have a lot of pretty festival activities. We've got the soccer tournament coming up. Yep. That's a biggie. That's one of the biggest in the whole region. That'll be here in Troy. So uh, lots of things going on. All right. Well, we look forward to that, and we'll look forward to talking with you again next week. I appreciate it, Clint. And David, thank you very much. This has been the Mayor's Report. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David Denoyer on TCTV.